Northern Ireland versus England for a World Cup qualifying. Well, points are on the line for Northern Ireland. They are desperately needed. Let's join former Northern Ireland captain Gail Redmond, England's record appearance holder Farrah Williams and Robin Cowan at Windsor Park. Another momentous occasion for the women's game. All available tickets here at Windsor Park sold. It's a record crowd for a women's match in Northern Ireland. Can you turn her up and get the ring? Let's get your teams then for today's World Cup qualifier. Two changes to the Northern Ireland team, beaten 3-1 in Wiener Neustadt. A special night for 19-year-old Jolie Andrews, who makes her first international start after scoring her first senior goal against Austria. Kelsey Burrows also starts in defence. Rachel Furness, a familiar name in the English game, is Northern Ireland's all-time top scorer, including seven in a World Cup qualifying. As for England, it was another thumping win on Friday evening, a 10-0 victory against North Macedonia. Serena Wiegmann makes two changes tonight. Mary Earps replaces Hannah Hansen in goal, while newly named captain Leah Williamson plays at centre-back, with Jess Carter moving to left-back. Demi Stokes drops to the bench, having notched her 50th goal on Friday. Ellen White is now just three goals off Wayne Rooney's international record. And a couple of players to pick out ahead of this one. Starting with the, the England corner, Farrah Williams. You want to focus on one of the most prolific goal scorers England's got at the moment. Yeah, I'd like to mention Jeff Mead. I think she's been fantastic under Serena uh, Wiegmann in this England team. I think, you know, whether it be starting the game or coming on and being an impact player, she's certainly scoring and assisting this England team. And she looks like a different player in, the, in, in this environment under Serena. So I'm looking forward to seeing what she can deliver again today. And Gail, a threat, a potential one for England from the Northern Ireland side. Yeah, I, I go for Demi Vance. I think uh, she's really looked like an accomplished defender uh, recently, you know, playing uh, week in, week out for Rangers. Um, I think uh, our delivery and set plays is probably what we're really going to be hoping for tonight, uh, for her to be clinical in that. Northern Ireland's hopes of qualifying for next year's World Cup are pretty much over after that defeat to Austria on Friday night, but still something on this preparation for the next meeting at this summer's European Championships. So both sides will be eyeing each other up, seeing what they can take when they go into that game at St Mary's in June. And England still need a point to qualify if they win tonight. That's because Austria beat Latvia convincingly earlier on. England rampant under Serena Wiegmann. They've not dropped a single point. In fact, they've not even conceded. And in the process, they've also scored 63 goals. A 4-0 defeat of Northern Ireland in the reverse fixture at Wembley. And a good reception around Windsor Park as all the players and the referee take the knee ahead of kick-off to highlight the opposition to all forms of discrimination. And so England will get us underway with one of the bright young things that will, I'm sure, light up the Euros. Lauren Hemp plays it back to the new captain, the new permanent captain, Leah Williamson. And Windsor Park, it's been building steadily the atmosphere and it is absolutely rocking. Will it be silenced immediately? It's a crossover from the far side. And it's out for a, a goal kick. Gail, I mean, what an occasion. It, you can feel it, the emotion coming through, can't you? Absolutely, just as the stadium was filling up. Um, this is just a milestone in uh, Northern Ireland's history in football. Uh, to be here at Windsor Park and for there to be a full house is incredible. It's their previous 
record crowd has been absolutely smashed out of the park. 3,500 watched the win against Latvia. And Northern Ireland will play it out from the back. That's a philosophy that the manager, Kenny Shields, wants them to adopt. And something, perhaps, Farrah Williams, that England can exploit. Yeah, most definitely. It's interesting to see how Northern Ireland have set up with a back five and they look like they're matching England three for three in the middle, but leaving two up front to really try and occupy the two England centre half. So they're, they're certainly playing with a little bit of a threat with two, two players up front. Mm. Um, and obviously they've got a back five to try and deal with a threat that, that, that we have in our front line. Mm. The first corner of the game, and it's going to be taken by Lauren Hemp of Manchester City. Four senior goals, all in World Cup qualifying for Lauren Hemp, all against Latvia, that 20-0 win. Taken short, it's well worked by England, Samway had a swing at it, but it was really well defended actually, and Northern Ireland, well their attempted break, just broke down. Yeah, that's what we're looking for, we have to play quick on the counter, and we're going to have to be able to suck up an awful lot of pressure, and defending like that in tender box is going to be crucial tonight. I think certainly England have to be switched onto the counter-attack from set plays. You know, committing so many bodies forward with, with Northern Ireland keeping two strikers up. We have to be, you know, prepared for the counter-attack, which is what it looks like Northern Ireland are looking to play on. A slight error from Jess Carter, just lost her footing, but the ball down the line for Wade is easily dealt with by England. Millie Bright brings it away. Uh, not a great pass. from Chelsea centre-half, had a magnificent season for club. And Northern Ireland all playing with fire. And we saw that against Austria. And Ellen White nearly profiting. High risk. And a few uh, clenched jaws up in the commentary box. <laughs> yes. I think we have to be careful at the back there. <laughs> Kenny Shields is uh, celebrating his 40th wedding anniversary tonight. Where else would you rather be on such an occasion? Hopefully he's got something else planned as well for Gwen at some point. Trip to the Euros? Ah, oh, there we go. Lucky girl. As we expect, England will have most of the possession here. Bright allowed to stride forward. Now Bronze scored her last international goal against Northern Ireland in the friendly at St George's Park back in February 2021. Here's Carter. Now Hemp. That's good defending from Northern Ireland. Abby McGee and Jolie Andrews. And speaking of emotion, Gail, Jolie Andrews, one of your... Uh, players that you've seen grow up from a, a wee one into, well, not so wee, still a little bit wee, but a uh, 19-year-old and making her first international start. Yeah, today. she's had an incredible journey and, you know, she's been part of our Player Pathway programme, you know, since she was 11 years old and, you know, to see her now starting in, in, in the big stage, in the European stage uh, for Northern Ireland against England, I know her parents will be immensely proud and also our club Glenthorne. Looks up, tries to play the ball over the top for Wade. Cut out by Bright. And a little bit too much on that from Millie Bright. Just trying to get Orion, find her range. I feel England need to be a little bit patient. They're trying to, you know, force balls forward early into those wide areas. I feel like the wide areas for us, you know, is going to definitely be England's out through our fullbacks more so than our wide players. As we progress up the pitch, I feel like you could bring the wide players into play and overload them in wide areas. But it's got to start from the fullbacks, and I think we've got to stop forcing play, try and get a little bit of ball, make it hard for this Northern Ireland team. A bit of rain, a bit of a slick surface. Walsh has passed a bit too much on that. Now Carter down the line for Hemp. A death touch to find Ella Toon. Hemp around Nelson. Lovely dummy from the referee, the vision, taking the lessons from Mike Dean. Here's Bright. Northern Ireland never beaten England. It's the 11th meeting. They haven't scored against England since 1985. Every 10th. 
A bit of space here for Toon. That's well read by Julie Nelson. Record caps holder. Made her debut for Northern Ireland some 18 years ago. Carter waiting for options. At the moment, Northern Ireland doing a good job of keeping England at arm's length. Yes, Robin, that's going to be key tonight. You can see that they're encouraging the push up because we're going to need to be compact. But sometimes when you are, you don't have very much of the ball. You have a tendency to drop early, and we can't do that. We can't invite the pressure on to England. We, that's why with our two forwards, we need to make sure that they don't have an easy time of it. Bright allowed to come forward again. The Northern Ireland in a, in a good shape. Bronze. It's good movement from Georgia Stanway. A good burst of pace as well. And that should have been 1-0. Ellen White made a good dart to the front post but couldn't get a header on target. Yeah, unfortunately, Marissa Callahan just, she tracked her but she took that wee extra touch, the dummy there, and that was a really good opportunity for Ellen White. I think it's these runs from midfield. I think if our, if our wide players are going to play narrow with the full-backs really high on the touchline, I feel it's important for our tens to get beyond and there's a great run from, from Stanway there. And, you know, the ball into Ellen White, we expect her to get a touch on that and, and put it in the back of the net. Serena Wiegmann, England manager unbeaten in her 10 games so far. And England's better run for six years. They last went 11 unbeaten. 2012-2013. Been a good start to her managerial career in England, but uh, really the test will begin in July at Old Trafford. And England face Norway in the opening game of the Euros. Nelson back to Burns. And Northern Ireland again just about getting away with it. Composed enough from McFadden, who gets it away. That's a lovely flick header. But McGill can't keep the attack going. Really brave from Northern Ireland playing out there under immense pressure from an England front line. You know, they're expected to press under this, uh, you know, the Serena Beacons team. So they're playing a little bit with fire, I'd say. And I think, you know, they certainly have to be careful playing out inside that 18 yard box. There's been a few now where, you know, they've got themselves a little bit lucky. Good burst of pace away from the touchline, but again, good through ball, no one there to receive. Now, Kira Walsh, one of the first names on the England team sheet. Yeah, she's a quality player. She just sits in that six so well for England. Hemp in behind, delivers. Oh, what a clearance that was off the line from McFadden to deny Beth Mead. Two really good England chances not taken. A good awareness from McFadden. Yeah, I think Farah said it early on, it's the wide play from England, and it's two times now they've got in behind us, and they've caused us serious problems. There is Rachel Furness of Liverpool, just promoted back to Love Yourself. I think, with, you know, when you're playing against a pressing team, it's important that you try and play forward passes and try and beat that press. Northern Ireland are playing into the England press and that they really are causing themselves problems. And against a team like England with such quality in the team, it's not going to be long before one of these, you know, a big mistake and then see themselves uh, go a goal behind. Yeah, it's a philosophy that Kelly Shields has brought into the team. You know, he wants them to, to play brave and it's maybe just the balance that they haven't got completely right of sometimes you have to... You have to go long and you have to play a little bit ugly. Carter. Let's see what she was trying to do. A bit of a disguise on that towards Ellen White. And this was a really good bit of play from England and a it's really a a defensive clearance. It was a fantastic ball from Ella Toon into the channel and you see Hempy, Lauren Hemp come from wide infield and it's a fantastic cutback and it takes the two centre halves out of the game and McFadden on the line with a fantastic clearance. Unsung hero, 
Sarah McFadden has been for Northern Ireland throughout the years. At 34 years old, winning her 88 cap today. Just played England as well, championship with Durham, who are always up there towards the uh, top of the championship. Not so much this season, sixth at the moment. But also a mum, a real inspirational character. She is very much so um, a hero and I think we have a few goats and on this team, but she would definitely be one of mine. I think, uh, you know, I certainly have experience, you know, in this Northern Ireland team, certainly today, you know, with the crowd, they've probably never played, apart from, you know, the Wembley game, with such a big crowd, they've got a home crowd behind them tonight, so they'll need the experience of McFadden, you know, to keep her players calm in those situations. Demi Vance has not had a chance to really show off her dead ball delivery yet, but uh, caused a few problems against Austria on Friday. Zinsberger, the Austrian keeper, Arsenal keeper, didn't look comfortable at all. At the moment, they can't really get out of their own half. And here's Ellen White. Bronze. A little bit too hesitant, but shows her some chances to win it back, but then Northern Ireland dispossess her. And just that final ball. Maybe a little bit rush sometimes. Yeah, unfortunately, we just really need to get in behind England, I think, when we're, we're playing on the counter and uh, make them turn and uh, give us a chance, maybe on a foot base. I'd like to see England wide players be more patient, stay out, stay out on the touchline for longer. I think that's where we're going to get our overloads, and that's where you're going to allow the spaces for, the, for, the, for, the, for our tens to run between, you know, the fullback and the, the you know, the third player in, as a centre half. That's where we're going to get our chances from. Well, when the they're narrow, I think it makes it too easy for them. Ella Toon trying to win it back, and the referee plays an advantage. And McGill allows the turn to stop runner forward in Wade. A good challenge coming in. Yeah, I just think she waited too long. The pass just maybe needed to be played a wee bit sooner. Give her an opportunity maybe to run in behind. Positive stuff from Northern Ireland, though. They can't be underestimated, the achievement of getting to a first major tournament, the lowest-ranked side to do so. Now, Carter. Bring it left back. Another players had an excellent season for Chelsea but it was slow burn since she joined there from Birmingham now getting regular minutes Bright with the cross uh, oh it's bounced over Abby McGee to Hemp this is Ella Toon of Manchester United Right into Beth Mead. 12 goals in World Cup qualifiers, including four on Friday night at North Macedonia. McFadden getting tight to White, but she's wriggled away. Nelson gets a foot in, and just wide. Ella Toon with the strike. It's a really good ball from, Ellen, uh, from Leah Williamson into Ellen White. Straight down the middle, and it just ricochets into uh, Tooney on the edge of the box. She, she needs to do better with that chance. You know, it's a, it's a great strike, but one that I would be expecting her to hit the target from. Uh, Tooney got a hat trick on Friday as well. England on excellent run, but I think it should be noted in mitigation that since been a fairly regulatory qualifying period in the World Cup. Austria have given them the best game actually and 1-0 win, Ellen White scoring the winner. And next two qualifiers for England away at Austria and Luxembourg it's in September. Toon, it's a really good ball, finding Mead, now Bronze, a 
Lel from Hemp. Gets it back from Carter. Hemp trying to get around Nelson. He's stuck tight to her and then draws the foul. Excellent work there by Julie Nelson and showing all her experience. You know, her timing was impeccable and it needed to be. Just see it there. A wee bit of a tangle and smart to go down at the right time there. Good win from Williamson. Close control from Toon, but she's given it to Callahan. Now Furness. Andrews. Lord Man will just enjoy completing a few passes. Feeding the ball. Furness away from Toon. It's great to hear every good touch being cheered by the Windsor Park crowd. But Jess Carter on the front foot to win it back for England. Now Hemp. Lovely touch from Stanway. Works it on to Mead. Bronze. And now White. Again, McFadden is there to charge down the shot. And that was absolutely excellent by England. You know, from the left side to the right side, looking for the gaps. And Thankfully, Northern Ireland dropped at the right time just to snuff out any danger. Toon just can't quite find the right angle. Nelson makes the clearance. Farrell, this is better from... Yeah, this is where, it's when England are at their best. When you have runners beyond this Northern Ireland back line, it's really difficult for them to defend. And you see Lucy Bonds get beyond and put a beautiful cross at, into the box. And McFadden, you know, reading the game really, really well, getting nice and tight to Ellen White and clearing her lines. Well, there would have been huge disappointments from the results in Austria, but so much to look forward to for Northern Ireland. All of their games will be played at St Mary's, Southampton. So, a couple of weeks down by the south coast, not bad at all. And hopefully, a few good performances and results. Or pinned in the town green. <laughs> Just not in the last group game. Furness. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. Again, Northern Ireland will play the short game. Nelson gives it away to Carter. White. It's Lucy Bronze who's forward here. Bronze. And just wide. I just think Demi Vance did enough just to put her off the shot, but that was a real, real opportunity. They're not shy, are they, Northern Ireland, in playing out? And look, they make a mistake in playing it to Jeff Carter. Again, Lucy Bronze getting forward and into the box, and a fantastic challenge there by. By Vance. Maybe a slightly fortunate one. She was Lucy Bronze caught just after the ball had gone, but uh, no complaints from England's right back. And I think what's key for England too is the numbers that they got forward. You see Ella Toon there just making that third man run, and if there was any spills, he was ready there for the tap in, and it's happened a few times. And you know, Julie Andrews really going to have to try and get tight to her. Ellen White expected Beth Mead to be there instead. It's Vance is allowed to advance. And a little bit too much on that. Simone McGill. It's precision on the pass. Yeah, it was better from Northern Ireland. It was in behind. It gives Simone a chance to get onto it. Unfortunately, just not quite accurate enough. But that's, it. that's exciting. That's exactly what Northern Ireland need to do in the counter attack. to bronze. First time on to Mead. And Stanway. Well, the line are making these challenges at just the right time. Right. It opened up for it. Ricochets off Nelson, and that's a good save. And the rebound from Ellen White is in, but the flag is up. Yeah, Robin, that's what I was talking about earlier on. You know, 
those two great strikes. Julie Nelson in the right place for the first one to get the block in. But Ellen White was there, and what, this is what exactly she does so well and has done for England. Yeah, you can see Ellen White's miles offside here, you know, when the, the, the shot's taken from Meade. But great to see her following up, and that's why she gets so many goals. She's always in the right position. But just, uh, you know, on this occasion, she's offside. I would say a, a good spot from Christina Beal, the assistant referee, but a um, fairly easy one for her. <laughs> You can see, you can really see Northern Ireland growing into the game. I think the longer, you know, they've kept, you know, England out of the goal, they've started to grow into the game. They're starting to play, you know, possession-based, more forward passes. They're starting to get into the England final third. So they'll take a lot of confidence from this first 20 minutes. Oh, Shields. Even Shields trying to show some skills down oh. there. Look at him. That was a poor touch. <laughs> Very poor. I think it was intentional. <laughs> Kicking it out for longer. <laughs> Oh, in that case, that's genius. And Kenny Shields was booked after about 10 minutes against Austria um, when Northern Ireland had, their, had won a free kick. So um, just a little illustration there of a what sort of coach that he is. Very passionate man. And he's nearly three years in the job and he's already leaving such a legacy. He really is. And uh, he just has such high standards and... Uh, unbelievable belief in this group of players you know you've seen it you know Faris has chatted about how brave we are on the ball and um, again he just that's the expectations he has England having to be patient here is Carter Tempo two attempted pass towards Bronze, but McFadden makes another interception. Bronze wins it back well. Missed the first half of the season, Lucy Bronze with injury. No coincidence that Manchester City's fortunes have turned around with the return of Lucy Bronze, Lily Roebuck, Kira Walsh. Here's Toon going for goal. Easy one for Burns. Do you think Farah a bit more patience needed? I think so. I think tactically, I think, you know, we're, we're not testing Northern Ireland. I think our, our wide players go in now, and I spoke about it early on. I think when our wide players go, er, go in early, I think it makes it really easy for this Northern Ireland team to defend our fullbacks because it allows for the wide player to then release to the fullbacks. I think what they have to do is stay wider for a lot longer and try and double up in the wide areas. So, for example, here, if Beth Mead stays on a touchline, it opens up gaps. It stretches their back line, which is what England need. Williamson. Big weekend for a lot of these players. FA Cup semi-finals. West Ham against Manchester City and Arsenal against Chelsea this weekend. Goes live on the BBC for you. Billy Bright sends it forward again. Doesn't reach the intended target. Straight to Burns. Georgia Stanway cut out again by McFadden that's trying to get around Bronze not an easy thing to do but she's got it back the poke pass straight to Jess Carter Hemp the burst of acceleration Toon to Hemp yes. and it's in uh, Lauren Hemp well not the cleanest of finishes but the result was what she wanted. And Northern Ireland's resistance is broken. I think the scuff shot may have confused Burns in the goal. Not the most pretty goal, but she'll take it. England lead. Yeah, and it comes from Lauren Hemp driving with the ball and just releasing Toon into the channel and then following her run into the box and it just comes back to her. She gets a touch on it and Look, it just lifts it over the keeper. I'm not sure of the intent, but it, but it certainly looks good on the eye. She'd argue that she meant that. <laughs> just nicely executed and lifted over the keeper. 
got to yeah. say, if she did mean that, that's pretty special. Burns had absolutely no chance. No, and I think the frustrating part there for Northern Ireland is it was a mistake from Burns to begin with. You know, it was a bad clearance, and then we never recovered. The gaps were open, and England were able to get in behind. But we talked about it earlier. You know, the runs from the midfield from England um, are excellent, and we have to make sure that we track those runners. International goal. I'm sure we'll be seeing many more. Yeah, the next five minutes are going to be so important for Northern Ireland. You know, we, we've seen it against Austria. They were so disappointed, and now we have to really learn from that and get tight. Show a bit of maturity. Here's Carter. Now Hemp, Toon, attempted to take the shot but plays in Stanway, space here for Bronze, first time cross in, poked away by McGee, and that's good strength from Kira Walsh, stave off Simone McGill, Carter, that's well defended from Nelson, yeah, Northern Ireland really going to have to stay compact and tight and don't let the runners just easily move off them and put pressure on the ball. And if we can, when we get it, can we hold on to it a little bit? I've just seen the goal again there. And you can see, I think she did miss kick it. You can see from Lauren Hemp's reaction that she felt as though she didn't get good connection on it. But the connection was good enough to, you know, lift it over the keeper. A little way down for Northern Ireland here. Not absolutely sure what happened there, but uh, needing some treatment. Yeah, I think it was a little coming together. A chance for Kenny Shields to deliver some words of advice. The unscheduled drinks break. Yeah, I see the team physio, Catherine Ferguson. Team doctor, William. A good, good crowd in tonight. A fantastic crowd. Something, you, you know, Northern Ireland should certainly be proud of the crowd that they've, you know, got in today for, for this international fixture. Fantastic. Yeah, it's what this team has done. It's an inspired nation. And uh, we are so fortunate on, in our country that we have good collaboration. And so many other sports are represented uh, tonight, which we're, we're really excited to you know, for, for them as to be guests here. I've seen some of the Ulster hockey and the GEA and, and the rugby as well. It's brilliant. Wade. Well, she's going to continue for now. There's six players in the squad to play for Glen Torrent. There's White. The kill. That's good play. And the play with an offside. That looks very tight indeed, I've got to say. Let's take another look at this one. Yeah, I think she's clearly offside. She, she had it gone early, if the fans didn't recognise it in the wee extra touch from, from Demi. You just see it there, yeah. Just drifted offside. I think Leah Williamson does really well to just, you, you, you know, stop and stand still and allow the, the runner to go offside. It was brave. Carter. A non-natural left footer on that left side, so always wanted to cut back on her right. Yeah, but I think it, I think it's okay to, for, for Jeff Carter to come back inside. I think what she needs is their midfield. They start to make a run forward and then you check back. And they're actually not breaking the line with their movement. If they if they commit to their run, I think they're going to hurt this Northern Ireland team, which will allow Jess Carter to pick passes out. Attempting to pick out Hemp. Nelson dealing with it. They certainly have to be more committed to single midfield to make runs beyond. That's what they're in there for. When you're playing against a, a deep line that Northern Ireland have, you have to break it, and you break it by running beyond. Mm. 
Toon. Lovely bit of skill. Mead. Now Walsh to Stanway. Oh, that's a lovely layoff. And Ellen White. Maybe too many uh, touches. Eventually the flag goes up. That looks offside in the first instance. I'm not sure why that took so long. Yeah, I think you, you could see it early on. I think, you know, Ellen White had run herself offside. You can see it here in the replay. The touch around the corner, just slightly offside. It's close, but for me it's offside. And again, McFadden, you know, good defending before the flag goes up. Williamson playing at centre half today. He uh, played mainly as a midfielder alongside Kira Walsh under Serena Wiegmann. It'll be interesting to see when Alex Greenwood returns from injury. I think the nice thing about that is that Serena Wiegmann has options with this England team. There's so much quality within the squad. The squad depth now, you know, is so competitive. <laughs> Bronze on to Mead. That's really good defending from Callahan. Little mum of the team. Little boy Quinn. Carter. No one really tight close to her. Eventually Simone McGill gets back and wins the ball. They're playing the WSL. Simone McGill's been at Everton for over a decade. And McGee cuts out that pass. Yeah, it's a real crucial time in the game for Northern Ireland. You know, 33 minutes gone. And I think if, you know, they've been able just to come together, sit a wee bit deeper here, tie up the pressure a wee bit faster, and, and make England really, really work for this. Again, McGee gets a foot in. He's one of the domestic players that are now full time. The program that came in in January to support the domestic players ahead of the Euros. And hopefully, it will pay off. I think the players have already said it has. McFadden's clearance, back in by Hemp. Stanway closed down by Callahan. Oh, Bronze, that's a loose ball. The wave, though, can't keep hold of it. Here's Hemp. Again, good defending from McGee. Excellent. Again, Northern Ireland cannot switch off in this this corner. I've been down this left hand side with Lauren Hemp where you know England have found you know their best qualities. I think you know the quality that Lauren Hemp's had on the ball driving into the box trying to create something. I think other than that, I think England have been quite sloppy around the park. Georgia Stanway taking the short corner. Work to Walsh. Different angle to send it in. And Billy Bright went down. Picked up by Williamson. It's a great touch. A lovely ball through and wide. And a corner kick. It's another really good challenge from McFadden. Yeah, I think Demi Vance will be happy to see that McFadden was a last ditch tackle again and that's what she does well you know she sees the danger and coming across here and she just gets her body in the in the way excellent defending Lauren Hemp 
play with this one. They stop their set pieces, England. Yeah, they're showing good variety in the set pieces. I'd like to see one wrap just underneath the keeper, you know, with the, the height that you have within the box. England, White and White and Lucy Bonds. I think it would be more of a threat. I wouldn't, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with having two co commentators. A lot of disagreements. This Hemp. And it's a really good header away from Furness. The one, play you, don't, the one play you don't want to put the ball near yeah. here is Furness. Having played with her, you know, one of the best headers in the women's game. You've got to miss her if you're going to put a good delivery in. That's not a bad one. That's a really good piece of goalkeeping from Burns. The flag has gone up. She didn't know that. Good decisive play. Again, it's the quality that's coming from Lauren Hemp. Great delivery. She's actually on, looks on side for me, uh, Ellen White, at the back post. Great delivery again from Lauren Hemp from the right hand side this time, in swinging, making it difficult, but really brave from the keeper Burns there to come out and punch. So much learning for these young Northern Ireland fans because that's just typical number nine play, you know, playing off the shoulder of the centre back. And, you know, it's the reason why Ellen White is, has been so successful as a striker. Six goals at the Olympics, six goals the previous World Cup in France. It's a good ball over the top from McFadden, putting Leah Williamson under pressure. But a good distance on the header and a rare touch, in all honesty, for Mary Earps. I mean, it's the right ball from McFadden, in behind a high England back line with, you know, runners beyond. And it's good defending from Leah Williamson to get a header back into Mary Earps. Right, straight to Beth Mead. And Burrows gets a foot in. Another corner for England. And played in the championship with Blackburn, Kelsey Burrows. A few of these have uh, played in English game. with this delivery. Well, the goalkeeper came and bounced harmlessly wide. I don't, I don't think the delivery was bad from Lauren Hemp. I just think the movement, you know, was too early and it's missed all of our, you know, runners. I think Lucy Bonds has gone way too early. The delivery has not been taken and it's missed everybody. to really hurt from here so it's going to be Julie Nelson they've sent pretty much everyone forward Julie Nelson's been also a dead ball specialist as well for Crusaders scored many free kick last year in the Niffle Premier League both our coaches here tonight cheering her on by Callahan. Here is Carter. Hemp once again up against McGee. Stanway. Now Toon. Bronze takes it on. Good burst from her towards the back post and it's over the bar from Hemp. I just think that Demi fans just need to get a little bit tighter there to bronze. Again, that's a dangerous cross coming in. And have there, you'd get to the better of McGee. And of course, he just can't direct the header down. 
I think it's really good from Lucy. The way she slows the ball down and then draws the defender in to push a pass and then just dings one to the back post. If, you know, the delivery from Lucy Bonds there, she's picked out Lauren Hemp at the back and just dings one to the back post. I think Lauren Hemp, you know, the header has to do better and maybe hit the target. Almost looks so easy for Lucy Bonds, doesn't it? She breezes past players. She does. She does it so well and she's done it so consistently, consistently over the years. Andrews really made up for her heavy touch but England's have it back again McFadden is there to clear up but the flag is up I think Kenny Shields will be very pleased with the response since going behind because that was one of the main issues especially on Friday night one became two and three yes I, I think that Northern Ireland showed really good leadership just like Jackie's doing right now Jackie Burns she's slowing the play down got a wee knock there uh, it takes the sting out of the game and it takes uh, England's rhythm, you know, it, it, it breaks it up and that's the kind of things Northern Ireland have to do to be able to stay in this game. But just the one sub goalkeeper, he doesn't like to name three, does he, Kenny Shields? It's interesting in these, in these squads. He's going to have to at the Euros, so um, might be a position up for grabs. Uh, to see. Not me, I'm stood on a box, I can't, <laughs> I can't be a goalkeeper. Yeah, there's uh, Maddie Clifford from Crusaders. Uh, unfortunately, Lauren Perry um, got a serious ACL injury, so she's out. But, you know, he's got options there, and uh, he, he's working on that. Northern Ireland will be hoping that, you know, Burns is okay because she's been fantastic, not just with her hands and, and coming out and punching, but she's been fantastic with her feet and starting attacks for Northern Ireland. She's very comfortable back. So they'll be hoping that she's okay and, you know, can recover. Becky Flackerty there, just, just getting ready just in case, along with Megan Bell. Oh, she's playing the WSL with Liverpool, Becky Flaherty is now in the third tier. I think Jackie Burns will want to carry on if she can, but it's always a concern, isn't it? Yeah, look, you know, certainly with the back, and it, you know, it looks like it might have spasmed, it, you know, you can't really tell. Hopefully, as I say, because... You know, she certainly kept this Northern Ireland team in the game. She's having a fantastic game, and I'm sure she'll want to continue the game. You know, a home crowd, it's been fantastic. Callahan, plants with a bit of space over on the far side. Up against Bronze. Good movement from Wade. But Bright, just a little bit too strong. And the rare Northern Ireland attack is... Put a stop to... I think Millie Bright there just shows her experience and what she's been doing, you know, for her club Chelsea all year round. She's a stellar back there defending and we just have to play the ball a little bit quicker. You have to keep an eye on Burns. I'm just watching her from up here. She doesn't look as if she's moving quite comfortably. I think they may give her until half time and assess her. Just a few seconds left of normal time. We'll be at a few stoppages. Pass is cut out by Callahan, but she is it straight to Bright. So now Stanway, bronze on her outside. Mead I'm trying to get past three green shirts and couldn't do so. Three minutes, just going to open the board there. Three minutes. I think I'll be counting them down. <laughs> Time for more chances. We have good body position from McGee. And Ellen White as well. Contorted herself to try and get that header on target. It was always going to be difficult. I think the ball in... From Jeff Carter, you can see it here as Lauren Hemp plays it back to Jeff Carter. It's just behind um, Ellen White. And to execute that and try and get that on target is really difficult. When you're moving away from goal and trying to execute a header, really difficult technique. Hemp wins the header.
an excellent defender from Nelson there. She looked at Burns to go back and just allowed Ellen Mike to come in and was able just to get us a goal kick and hopefully run a little bit more time off the clock. And managing the game is so important to, uh, to Northern Ireland. When you're a team you don't have very much of the ball, in times like this we really have to try and run down the clock. Sam White. Carter. Weight of passing behind for Hemp. Just over Ellen White. Oh, that's a poor clearance. Straight to Stanway. Bronze in for White. Another glancing header wide from Ellen White. You can see from the deliveries, Lucy Bronze uh, again chipping one to the far post, or at least trying to, and Ellen White again trying to get onto the head. But it's been a consistent with, it, with this England team. When they get into wide areas, narrow, they really try and dink, they try and miss the first first defender and dink it beyond because the key, keeper will come to the near post to try and cover the goal, and they're trying to beat that near post and dink it to the far post with late runners. Right deals with the initial ball. This could be an opening for Northern Ireland. Andrews sticks on. Lucy Bronze taking a chance and being absolutely can be bad. Who looks incredulous, but I, I, I'm not sure she can have too many complaints about that one. No, it's not too many times you are able to knock Lucy Bronze off the ball, but I think she was off balance here, and Demi comes flying in. And good passage of play from Northern Ireland, though. We moved the ball quickly, we held it up from the gill. We got the crossover, and it's half time. And that's it, half time at Windsor Park. England lead by goal to nil, thanks to a bit of improvisation, we'll call it, from Lauren Hemp. Northern Ireland approved stubborn opponents, though, apart from that, without really troubling the England back line. Ellen White has also had a couple of chances to add to her tally. But Northern Ireland very much still in this game at the break at their national stage. Half time, Northern Ireland nil, England won. Yeah, and you think that, that would be the thing that they are most pleased about when they go in there and Kenny Shields sits those women down, that they are still in this game. But that is a tough way to play and it's doubtful you can carry on playing like that for another 45 minutes. Yeah, I don't think, you know, for 90 minutes it's going to be, you know, hard work for the girls. They're obviously putting in a good shift within today, but, you know, it's you can't do that for 90 minutes. I think Northern Ireland have to get higher up the pitch and support likes of Simone McGill, Lauren Wade. And, you know, we, we want to try and get a shot on goal at least. Um, obviously, we haven't created anything going forward in this half. So Yeah, some heroic defending sees it just 1-0. Lauren Hemp, which we can discuss in a moment, whether or not that was um, an absolutely <laughs> yeah, brilliant moment of genius chip or just a slightly fortuitous <laughs> uh, goal. But England have had over... 75% possession in that half. They should have probably got a bit more than Lauren Hemp's goal. Yeah, and Serena Wiegmann has been talking about being clinical and taking your chances because when it comes to the summer and in the tournament, when you're playing against teams ranked higher than you, creating chances are hard, so you need to take them. But I've liked what I've saw from England in the first half in terms of their movement. They've been fluid, lots of rotation during that. And it was about being patient and knowing that goal would come, however it did come in the end. Um, but no, overall, I've been pleased with England's performance. And you had talked about, in the build-up, you were talking about the interchanging of positions of England's players and how that was causing a few problems for, for Northern Ireland. Yeah. And actually, we can see that in the build-up to Lauren Helps' goal. Yeah, Serena Wiegmann spoke about developing England's style of play, so it's not just one set way. And you, I think from today, in this first half, it's evident what England are trying to work on with wide players, rotation, coming infield. And when you have players like him, you want them to drive at players, commit players. And there's the goal, whether she meant that or not, we're no after the game. But this is what I like from Hemp coming inside to allow players to then have those, occupy those wide spaces, take Northern Ireland players into situations that they don't want to go and create that movement and rotation. And that's what I've been most impressed with, with England experimenting more like that in the first half.
and I guess pleasing when the goal comes off the end of one of those runs as well. Um, what was that goal? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a worked on chip that she's, she's, she's been working on. <laughs> Let's really lower it slightly next time. Let's be <laughs> slightly nervous there. Uh, defensively, though, there have been some big performances. They've had to be some big performances to keep the scoreline at 1 0, haven't there? And, and of course, you know, McFadden, who we talked about before the match, was the player that came in for you. Uh, she's one of those who's put in a great performance. Julie Nelson, as well, has, has put in some really good last ditch attempts at, at keeping that scoreline down. Yeah, Sarah McFadden's been phenomenal in the back there at the heart of the defence. She's put her body on the line and, you know, that's what we expect from her. She's committed, she's determined and she's the kind of defender that you want in there to stop the likes of Ellen White, you know, scoring goals and she's kept her quiet again tonight like she did in Wembley. So, you know, it's, it's great to see. And then obviously, you know, the likes of Julie ne Nelson. She's obviously put in some great blocks. She's shadowing there, hemp down the line, and has eventually got a free kick. You know, so it's obviously vital that we've got our two experienced players in there. You know, Julie and Sarah McFadden leading the way and trying to obviously nourish those younger, younger. Well, they're not kids, but uh, young, well, young adults. Julie's 36, obviously. Sarah's 34. You know, she got her first cap 17 years ago. This experience right now is what's keeping them in the game. Those cool heads that they're able to display. Yeah, definitely. You know, Julie's 123 caps for Northern Ireland, and Sarah Mark's got 87. You know, so they're they know what they know how to defend, and you know it's important that they continue to do that in the second half. It shows what character you are as well. When, especially as we've seen, it's like an onslaught, wave after wave of mm. England attacks as well. So to have that mentality, to keep that encouragement and keep everyone around you going. You spoke about the leadership before the game, and that's certainly what we're seeing with some of the Northern Ireland players. And it wasn't just in the build-up to the goal that you'd seen, as I say, this pattern of play, of, of players changing positions that perhaps is causing a few problems for Northern Ireland. And maybe they'll work it out a little bit more in the second half. But just show us a few more examples of that. Yeah, we spoke about partnerships and how how important that is and what I'm seeing develop during this is the partnership between Stanway right over there and Beth Mead that rotation to allow if I'm coming out of this space I need to go in Ellen will be wanting that one back thinking that she could have done better and actually getting the all-time record instead of just breaking the Lionesses record there she'd want to be more clinical but it's partnerships all over the pitch when we see this side between um, Ella Toon and Lauren Hemp there switching positions both wanting to get on the play get on the ball and make things Things happen. What a great forward ball to split the defence and split players. Once again, England creating chances is what I like from this England team on Serena Beesman. That ability to keep that movement going, rotate, rotating. If one's going in, one's coming out. And also allowing, if it's not those players, then you've got Carter on one side allowing to get down mm -hmm. that space or Lucy Bronze also. And obviously Northern Ireland will go in now knowing they can you know, keep defending well, but they have to do something in attack, not a shot on goal. Where is that going to come from? I think, obviously, we need Rachel Furness to maybe get on the ball more, start to drive out from the midfield. I think that's going to be important. She's one of our leading goal scorers, so we need her to really get the grips for the ball and push on and drive that sort of midfield higher up the pitch and try and get the defenders higher up the pitch to support the likes of Simone McGill and Norm Wade. Because so. you really need the crowd as well to get going, don't you? And they've really given it their best shot, haven't they? But they can't keep cheering for the kind of defensive <laughs> clearances. They need something to yeah, kind of get hold of, don't they? Definitely, yeah. You yeah. heard just before half-time, that, and it's actually waiting for your moments, because you know England are always going to have more possession, but it's waiting for those moments that England might switch off, mm -hmm. just before, like we just saw with Lucy yeah, Bronze, on the counter. and you could hear the yeah. roar from the crowd. Yeah, plenty more of that to come. But earlier in Group I, Wales beat Kazakhstan 3-0 to maintain their challenge for a playoff place. All going very well uh, for Wales. The opening goal came just before the half hour mark. Kaylee Green grabbing her fifth goal of the qualifying campaign. And then just before half time, Natasha Harding, who was earning her hundredth cap, scored her fifth goal of qualifying. And then midway through the second half, it was three. Jess Fishlock, who else? Wales most cat player, fired one home. And of course, uh, for those who follow Welsh football closely, you'll know she scored the winner in this stadium in a World Cup qualifier five years ago. So she's got form around there. So that win sees Wales leapfrog Slovenia into the playoff spots with two games remaining. In September, they're going to face Greece away, followed by a potentially crunch match at home, Slovenia. Uh, France are currently playing Slovenia. At the moment, they're holding them. Uh, well, Slovenia are anyway, because France would be expected to win that when it's goalless. But a point would see the French qualify. Uh, meanwhile, 
at Hamden. Scotland are currently playing Spain in Group B. Now, this kicked off at 7.35, and the Scots are doing well because they lost 8-0 to the Spanish earlier in qualification. They've managed to restrict them to just that goal. Uh, Jennifer Hermoso, who netted her 44th international goal there from the penalty spot. So, uh, I imagine the Scots would be quite pleased with that. Um, and you can watch that live on BBC Alba and BBC iPlayer as well. OK, let's take your pitch side at Windsor Park. Nicola McCarthy is with a big Northern Ireland fan who knows a few Derry girls. Yes, she does indeed, Gabby. I'm delighted to be joined at pitch side by actress Tara Lynn O'Neill, better known uh, to some of you, I imagine, as Ma from Derry Girls. Tara is a huge fan of women's football here in Northern Ireland. She's a fantastic ambassador for the sport, and she's written a play about the history of women's football here in Northern Ireland, which we'll come to in a minute, Tara. But first of all, what an occasion here tonight at Windsor Park. What an amazing night for Northern Ireland. The crowd have been amazing. We're one nil down, but the girls never give up. And they deserve this platform and this stage. I'm so proud to be here. In your research for your play, Rough Girls, Tara, you went back to the early days of the sport, so you know more than anyone just what a night like tonight means. Well, over 101 years ago, women first met in Northern Ireland to 16,000 fans. And it's so amazing that tonight, in 2022, 16,000 fans are here to support these girls. I've been lucky enough to see the play, Tara. It's a fantastic production, and it captures not just the history, but the energy and the passion that women's football has always had here in Northern Ireland. But also, it's no different than what we do in, in theatre and TV. It's for an audience, and the audience that are here tonight and here to support, they are why the game exists. And these girls have worked really hard to get on that stage and show us what they can do. I'm sure when you were down in the, the Belfast Telegraph archives and things like that over the past few years, even a couple of years ago, you couldn't have imagined a night like tonight. No, I never thought, I, I knew that we had the talent. The talent has always been here. It took someone like Kenny to, to show us and guide us and believe in us. And it's great to see that you know, the public are now believing in us. Um, and we're starting to believe in ourselves. And I think there is nothing to stop us. And as you say, the, the pride, the energy here tonight, it, people here are very proud, Tara, of what this squad has done and the journey that they've been on. Yeah, these, these young women, I know, I've know i known some of them for quite a long time. You know, it's, it's not just a game they play, it's, it's their life. They've dedicated their lives to it, and it's only right that we should come out and support them. There's plenty more still to come, Tara, with the Euros up ahead this summer. The spotlight will still be very much on this team and, again, another opportunity to grow the game. Yeah, I cannot wait. I can't wait to follow them. Um, and the, on the teams that are coming up below them, the young women that are coming up below them, and all the young women that are here, you know, from five and six and seven, they've, they've now got heroes to look at and aspire to be. Certainly do, Tara Lynn O'Neill. Thank you very much, and thank good you. luck with Series Three of Dairy Girls. Hopefully, as everybody's well. um, taping it or going to watch it on Catch Up tomorrow. I am sure. I am sure. The second half is coming up. The atmosphere here is electric. We're expecting more of the same. Shameless plug there um, but I love her passion and I, I guarantee she's got her tickets in the bag for the Euros in the summer and plenty of Northern Irish fans have haven't they already I mean they are coming over in their droves it is going to be fantastic okay and staying with the dramatization of women's football it is 20 years today since the release of the film Bend It Like Beckham look out for a special documentary on BBC iPlayer from this Friday Bend It Like Beckham was a huge success and it made history as the highest grossing film about football. Hush, not there are so many elements of it that are still true today. The film actually gave me a little bit of clarity on where I wanted to go with my life. I was like, this is me on screen. She's found her people. Maybe I can find my people. So to celebrate its 20th anniversary, I'm going to take a deeper look at the impact of the film. And have we discovered a new star here, Gary Lineker? That's right, John. Could Jess Bamra be the answer to England's prayers? Alan? Crikey, I look a lot younger. What are you thinking? Comfortable on the ball? I tell you what, I wish he was playing for Scotland. <laughs> yeah, I think I overacted a little bit. 
Well, it didn't result in an acting career for Gary Lineker. Keira um, <laughs> Knightley did pretty well after it. I mean, that was such an iconic film, wasn't it? And I, you, I can't believe it's 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. I remember I was in the Arsenal Academy. One of the Arsenal Academy girls is actually in the film. But I think what that film did, it allowed it to have some eyes on it before women's football was getting that mainstream kind of viewership. And it showed that young girls can dream to play football. I love where women's football is now, that the whole thing was going to play in America, but now we have the WSL and the setup here that players can dream of mm. staying here and playing. Yeah, it was, and, and they, those girls were so cool and they were mm -hmm. kind of, you know, you wanted to be like them. So, you know, that it gave women's football, I think, a, a completely different audience, didn't it? And, and you remember watching it? Don't tell me you were too young. No, I remember watching that <laughs> a couple of times, yeah. Yeah, a <laughs> bit of a fan, bit of a fan. Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, we've got uh, the FA Cup semi-finals all over the BBC this weekend. And it starts with the women, uh, the women of West Ham and Manchester City, indeed, on Saturday lunchtime. Coverage starts at 11.30 at Following that, it's the men's semi-final between Liverpool and Manchester City. It's their second meeting, of course, in seven days. They're getting to know each other very well. And then on Sunday, Arsenal and Chelsea's women play for a place at Wembley. And from tomorrow, BBC Sounds has a new podcast which features the England legend Jill Scott. You can download Jill Scott's Coffee Club. Have a little listen to that. She loves her coffee, uh, does our Jill. Um, there was a moment that was a bit nervy at the end there for England. Uh, Lucy Bronze, mm -hmm. a, a slight moment of hesitation. A slight moment. And I think this is the thing with England, when you have that amount of possession, staying concentrated the whole time. Lucy dealt with it in the end, but it was the first time you really heard that roar from Northern Ireland, the crowd, showing the players some belief to actually get at this England team more. Yeah, like obviously we want to get into the, their box. We want to get into England's box more. And like obviously, you know, we want to be trying to get a goal here you know we're not here just to make up the numbers we want to try and compete and obviously let's get a goal and make Winter Park go alive you know? <laughs> yeah when you get those chances you're going to have to take them Northern Ireland aren't you because they're not going to be uh, plentiful if the first half is anything to go by possession was all England 77% uh, not a shot on goal for Northern Ireland but crucially it is only 1-0 thanks to Lauren Hemp and uh, of course, the reverse fixture, the floodgates opened around 65 minutes, didn't they? And uh, you'd be hoping that Northern Ireland's fitness now that they are full-time, most of the players can really hang on in for the full duration. Yeah, we'd like to hope that the girls will go out here in the second half and push up higher in the pitch and really go at England. You know, we've nothing to lose. And I would say Kenny will want to see the girls look to keep possession more and get higher up the pitch and get Simone Gill and Rachel Furness on the ball. Yeah, I'm sure Simone Gill would like to keep that scoreline nil because she's managed uh, that throughout this campaign and add some goals to England's tally. Well, let's see if they can and rejoin Gail Redmond, Farrah Williams and Robin Couch. Thank you very much, Gabby. Yes, I think if uh, Farrah Williams' reaction up here is anything to go by, I'm not sure Serena Vegan would have been that impressed with that performance. Directing traffic up here. <laughs> Look, England have been good in the first half. I just, you know, how they've been playing of late, I've just expected more. I think tactically they've played into Northern Ireland's hands. I think, you know, we certainly need better, more in, in, intent in our running from midfield uh, beyond this Northern Ireland back line. And I'll expect that. I know they would have gone in at half time and Serena herself wouldn't have been happy with the first half performance. And we'll see a different England team in this half. I'm sure of that. She was giving us the hairdryer. <laughs> <laughs> For Northern Ireland, Gail, I guess, I mean, they've contained England fairly well um, with a few scares. At some point, if it is still just 1-0, going to need to throw a bit more caution to the wind, perhaps. Yeah, well, that is Kenny Stiley. You know, he's a brave coach. He's innovative. And, you know, I echo what Ashley Hutton said, you know, play a wee bit higher up the pitch and, and let this place go electric if we score. Yeah, Stamway and White couldn't quite get hold of it. This time, Nelson tight to her. And they're the type of runs I'm talking about. The runs from midfield, Georgia Stanway, brilliant run, driving into the space. A beautiful pass into Ellen White. But yeah, I mean, again, she, she didn't get much contact on it. A comfortable save for the keeper. Stanway hooks it forward. And White putting McFadden under pressure. And Burns quick off her line. Good to see Jackie Burns out for the second half. Up 
sends it forwards. Still a little bit of a question mark over goalkeepers in England. I think for the neutral fan, maybe, but I think, you know, Serena mentioned she sees Mary Yurts right now as her number one. I think certainly Hannah Hampton's knocking on the door. I think in possession she's very good. And if England are going to dominate possession, Hannah Hampton might be your one that you pick. Strange how times change could have nailed on that Ellie Roebuck would have been the number one going into this tournament a couple of years ago, but been unfortunate with injuries, especially at the beginning of the season. Maybe just hasn't shown enough, not capable of showing enough because she, she's not been fit to start. I think the competition between the three of them, I think, you know, you could argue for any one of them to play you know, in the games come the summer. So I think it's a good headache for Serena. I think they know that they keep it competitive. And, uh, you know, for so long, England have had a, a long-term a long number one. And so it's nice to see that actually we can mix it up. I had an opportunity to see their training yesterday. And I was so impressed by their goalkeepers. Every single one of them, the athleticism, uh, you know, their communication, everything that they worked on was, was a very, very high quality. Furnace closed down and Stanway manages to get the ball down the line and Bright puts it out of play under the challenge of Furness who does the old trotting away from the referee so uh, to try and avoid any other punishment yeah I think if you run over beside the next redhead then she might get confused but yeah it was an intelligent one from Rachel I think she saw the danger you know England were about to get the switch on the far side maybe create an overload just a word in the ear from referee Hussein German refereeing team today. Stamway. Manchester City's all time record scorer, Georgia Stamway, at the age of 23. White's lay off straight to Wade. Rachel Furness is pressurised straight away and England win it back. Williamson has turned from Mead. Walsh into Stanway. And now Lucy Bronze. Mead, McFadden taking control, Burns sliding out of her goal, read to the movement from Ellen White. Yeah, I think Northern Ireland just need to push a little bit higher and try and get Simone McGill into the game, you know, I don't think she's had a touch yet, you know, it, it's important that we try to keep the ball a little bit, you've seen it, but England are pressing so high now and they look like they're, they're ready to score more goals. Bronze, battling for it, getting away from Vance and pulling it back. And Ella Toon finishes off a really good move from England. England finally have their second and has just taken the game away from Northern Ireland now. And Ella Toon's fantastic scoring form for her country continues. She keeps going, she gets herself into the box, makes it hard for defenders to tackle. And then she picks out a pass. It's just behind 
just in front of the, the Northern Ireland back line and Ella Toon arriving late into the box and just passes it into the back of the net. Really composed finish from Ella Toon. Yeah. Al already into double figures, Ella Toon. On her 14th cap, her 10th goal. Yeah, I think we're Northern Ireland's disappointed. I'm disappointed, but we're on the attack here. Andrews into Wade, allowed to turn and shoot. And that's the first thing that Mary Earps had to do. Good response from Northern Ireland. And so they've talked about Simone McGill being able to get on the ball and she holds it up so well there. She gets it on the half turn and the early strike almost catches Mary Earps out. Stadium coming alive with Northern Ireland's first attempt on goal. Now Hemp against Callahan. Hemp, oh, it's an awkward one for Burns. Decent stop. Oh, England win it back. Toon plays it in towards White again. McFadden has been man marking her all game. Carter sends it in. And that's going to be claimed by Burns. Yeah, Julie Andrews, she's having a real tough time with Ellis. She shows so much quality here. That's a great effort by Simone McGill. Or Lauren Wade. Yeah, it's the Northern Ireland chance, isn't it? Wade on the half turn and hits it hard and low. It makes it really difficult to, you know, a backpedaling Mary Earp, who gets a really strong hand to it. I have to apologise to Lauren Wade. I thought it was Simone at the beginning. It's good effort. Mary Earp has had very little to do, showing that she's got concentration. It's another good trait for a goalkeeper. It was a lovely pass from Andrews. England now up to 65 goals in qualifying. Still none conceded. Bright. White's made the move. It's bronze. Might find the angle on that ball towards Lauren Hemp. England subs warming up. Beth England back in the England squad. She's certainly a player that I'd like to see. I think, you know, the form that she's shown at Chelsea of late has been fantastic. I think her work rate for the team, I think she's a fantastic team player. She's different to what Ellen White brings to this England team and I'd really like to see her get involved in this game and give her a good minute. Let, you know, put, put some, something into Serena's head. Give her something to think about. It's an opportunity now for her to do that with England being 2-0 up. And scored a brace in each of the last three Chelsea games in all competitions. It's been a difficult season for her in and out in terms of injury and also competition. Nilla Harder, Sam Kerr, Frank Kirby, the list goes on for Chelsea and their attacking depth. I think it shows the mentality of, of Beth England though. I think you know, you've got to have a really good, strong mentality to, to keep yourself focused, to keep yourself you know, in tip-top shape like she has done so that when she gets her moment, she's able to execute and she's done that so well on this Chelsea team. Mead into White, trying to wriggle away from McFadden. Mead takes it up. Hemp's delivery. McFadden just got a toe on that. Away for an England corner. Really good again from Hemp out on the wing. We speak about bending it like Beckham. I think she's bent a few in like Beckham today, hasn't she? What a film. 
had to get it so much up here. Had to get that line in. Some of the goalkeeping though in that final scene, a bit questionable, but uh, we'll leave that for another day. Here comes the corner, it's a deep one, and again the goalkeeper came. He didn't really get there, it was Rachel Furness who took decisive action, as she does. As I said, the one play you don't want to put the ball near in the box is Rachel Furness, fantastic header of the ball. Yeah, you talk about players like Atsu, excellent in the box for tagging, but so crucial that she does equally that in, in, in defending, and she's a vital part of this defence here in all set plays. Hemp. Away by Vance, a swig and a miss from Billy Bright. Home crowd enjoyed that. Hemp away from Vance, straight at Burns. We build up to the tournament of Northern Ireland. Do you expect this to be pretty much the squad? Any more ins and outs, do you think, as we come into July? Injuries permitting, of course. Yeah, I, he's got to still maybe one or two to come back that he'll evaluate. Again, you, you highlighted it before, a third a goalkeeper as well. So I would say, you know, he's, he's probably, as any coach, maybe has a fair idea. But again, he's always challenged his players in the full-time programme that the doors never close. Uh, you know, you keep performing. Um, our domestic league is about to start next week. You know, so we get another opportunity to see them playing uh, in their clubs, and and then hopefully then by, you know, June, June he'll have it nailed down. Challenge on bronze, and that's a very pertinent point actually, Gail. That a lot of these players are in sort of pre-season, maybe not up to their full fitness, fit and firing, match practice, etc. Yeah, it's difficult, you know, you're, you're playing friendlies, but it's not competitive. It's, it's hard to emulate that. And um, But we talked about their fitness, you know, and we're getting into, you know, 60 plus now. And we expect to make see a change for yeah, Northern Ireland, do you think? I think so. I think he'll make a change in the, the midfield. I uh, saw McLaren just warming up not so long ago. and maybe possibly change the shape oh here's him oh that is beautifully done Liam Williamson through ball and Lauren Hemp shows great quality and composure her second and England's third a player absolutely brimming with confidence it's just really good play from Leah Williamson. She drives into midfield and then finds a really good pass between the, the, the centre half and the run here from him from out to in, just between the defenders, takes it round the keeper. A fantastic finish. This is what I think England miss when Leah Williamson don't play in centre mid. She's able to drive with the ball with those long legs. She gets, she, she makes up ground, eats up the grass, and then finds passes like this, split passes between defenders. And an on-running Lauren Hemp just rounds the keeper and puts it away. Yeah, and it's the speed that she does it. It's excellent. It's a quick touch and a, and a fine finish. And I know when we were preparing uh, to face England and Wembley, Williams was one of the ones that uh, we really thought that we do not want to have on the ball because she can pick a pass, she's athletic, she can drive into the space, like you said, Farah, and she showed her real quality there. More changes for Northern Ireland. Rachel Furness off. And Chloe McCarran is on, and Lauren Wade also withdrawn, and it's Kirsty McGuinness who's coming on. Yeah, and you'll see Chloe McCarran just really slot in and in front of the back two there. She plays a really good six role, and Kirsty McGuinness, she's she's no stranger to this crowd, and she'll play high up the pitch. Karen started the game against Austria. 
show some good touches. And also McGuinness, tricky winger. She is, she's a big fan favourite. You know, she scores goals. She's excited when she gets on the ball. And one thing about Kirsty McGuinness, she loves the big stage. Good header by Burrows. Just that through ball from Leah Williamson. Burrows did get a touch on it, didn't she? But such was the pace on it. And changes two for England. Rachel Daly and Beth England ready to come on. Always interesting to see where Rachel Daly lines up. Such a versatile player. Yeah, she is really versatile. I think England see her as a full-back, whether that be as a left-back or a right-back, I think, you know, and, and credit to Rachel Daly, she's able to, you know, be versatile, go and play in America as a striker and come back to England and, and show great qualities in those full-back areas. Stanway finding Leah Williamson. Here's Mead. I'm trying to thread the ball for an eye of a needle. McCarran gets the interception. It's much better from England. The way they're passing and moving, there's runners off the ball, you know, making it really difficult for Northern Ireland. They look more fluid with the ball when they play like this. Williamson. Again, trying to thread it through towards Ellen White and Northern Ireland get the interception in but just can't keep the ball yeah and they just need to push up a little bit higher because they can't seem to get the the press you know they can't seem to force England into mistakes like they did in the first half and touch from McGuinness bit of a heavy one though from McGill Toon wins it back for England yeah they're just playing triangles now and Northern Ireland just got to keep their shape and see if they can apply a little bit more pressure on the ball Melatoon Farah seems to be a real favourite of Serena Beekman. Started featured in every game, I think, since Beekman came in. She's a fantastic player. I very, you know, the way in which Serena plays, she likes to play with two tens and, and tens that can take it in pocket, but also tens that can be on, run beyond. And both her, Georgia Stanway, Frank Kirby, they can all do that. Great play from McGuinness. Steps Vance away. Not too many options for her. Right for company, Lucy Bronze as well and she's done really well Vance she has there was a little nutmeg in there and Lucy Bronze here come the England changes White coming off and Beth England coming on to replace her scored against Northern Ireland in the reverse fixture and uh, Jess Carter also coming off for Rachel Daly. It's going to be a straight swap. Left back duties for Rachel Daly. With Houston Dash. It was McGuinness. Stolen from her by Stanway. Toon. Andrews is dispossessed by Mead. The early ball out wide. Bronze. Looking for England. A strong header away from McFadden. Walsh. A great turn from Lauren Hemp to Manchester City teammates, certainly on the same wavelength. Here is Daly. And Mead dispossessed. And out of play, Abby McGee. An aggressive play.
trick. Bronze. It's towards Mead. Didn't quite climb enough. And goal kick for Northern Ireland. Yeah, just goes to show you how hungry England are. You know, Bethany just chasing that down and looked like a nothing ball and we managed to get ahead on it and, and then chased it down again. And, you know, Northern Ireland still have to be resolute in defending because there's danger in a, in a lot of areas. Some excellent headwear on show. Flat caps are out. I think we spotted a bowler hat somewhere as well. Yours ain't bad either. <laughs> it's good to see all the generations there represented tonight. It's a reminder that Northern Ireland, with this result, their chance of qualifying for next year's World Cup in Australia, New Zealand. Now gone. England will need just a point when they play Austria in September. To confirm their place. Impressive performance from England and Serena Beegman's side. We've got a couple of friendlies warm up against Belgium and the Netherlands in June. And then the, the big tournament kicking off July the 6th against Austria at Old Trafford. Still tickets for that one. We need to get that one sold out. The opening game at Old Trafford. I know the other two good games have been sold out for, the, for this England team. So let's hope, hope we can get Old Trafford sold out. Fantastic occasion. I think the Euros are going to be fantastic in England. You know, the, the, the seven or eight you know teams that potentially could win it. It's going to be the most competitive tournament to date. So Mary sold out first. Sorry, so Mary. Mary. Yeah. Every game sold out first. Irish following. Day. Northern Ireland will be setting up camp on the south coast. Oh. Oh. It's another goal for England. Really well worked. And Georgia Stanway fires in. England's fourth. Lovely goal. And England are looking at a much more healthy and convincing scoreline. I mean, it's, it's, look, it's really, really good feet. Ella Two running the channel here and getting herself into the box makes it hard for the defender. A couple of step overs and then the defenders, they just give up. And she lays it nicely on the plate for Stanway to just put it away. Really good feet here. But the defending, once you get in the box, you've got to do better than that. You've got to commit to your defending in the box there. Giving the other two far too much space, and she's just able to find a pass to Stanway to just put away. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that Northern Ireland have really struggled to cope with the movement of Ella Toon in between the lines, and even in the box there, you know, she's, she's so tricky and she's skillful, and uh, again, we're just slow to get a, have any kind of pressure on the ball. And still 20 minutes to go. Now the same scoreline as it was at Wembley with the reverse fixture in the World Cup qualifiers. Nikita Paris on for England. And Paris replaces Beth Mead. Hasn't added to her 12 goal tally in World Cup qualifiers. Really good play from Ella Toon and unselfish as well. She could have taken a shot. You've seen a difference in the second half from Ella Toon and Georgia Stanway. The runs beyond, they're more aggressive and they're more intent with what they're doing. And they've both got themselves goals for doing that. It was just frustrating in the first half when, you know, you knew the quality that these two players had and they just probably, you know, wasn't demonstrating it enough or, or as consistently as they'd done in the second half. Well, Debbie Vance. 
It's going to receive the first yellow card of the game, pulling back Nikita Paris. Shot sign of frustration, perhaps. She's lucky to have gone 70 minutes without a booking. You know, she's done a few of these throughout the game. Clever fouls, smart fouls, and eventually, you know, she, she takes the yellow card. Really good running from Makita, though. Great ball. She gets beyond the defender, Vance, and she has to bring her down. And Fry, you were just talking about England in the, in the second half. That was quite similar at Wembley, you know, where Northern Ireland did such a good job in the first half and contained them. But it kind of took England to, to get to half time for Serena Wegman to kind of maybe get her instructions on. Do you, do you think that might be something that England need to work on to be able to start a little bit faster? You know, with these Euros, you can't, you can't start slow or other teams will be able to, you know, capitalise on that. Yeah, definitely. I think they have to identify themselves. I think they have to understand and, and try and recognise what the opposition are giving them. I think they didn't recognise that in the first half, the spaces that they could have exploited, and they've had to wait until half-time to be told that, it seems. Sam Waite takes a deflection. Uh, the corner kick is given. And Williamson didn't quite make contact. real feeling of a changing of the guard as well tonight three goal scorers for England all very young their first major tournament all of them really that they'll feature in you know, Sam Waite will play a bigger part this time around than she was in France in 2019 here comes the corner so it's a miscue and header away from Vance another corner Yeah, just a wee slight change to Northern Ireland's shape there. They've got Callahan on the post, where before they had they didn't have any players on the post. And Hemp once again, the punch away from Burns, with distance on it. Northern Ireland getting ready to make a double change. Yeah, it's good to see Rebecca McKenna and Nadine Codwell coming on. Nadine will strengthen and the midfield for Northern, Northern Ireland. Ireland. That's Rebecca McKenna of Lewis. Regular for the championship uh, side, England. England. Jolie Andrews coming off. Six, Good experience for her. Well. Yeah, we just saw Kelsey Burrows go down earlier there with the camps struggling to come off the pitch. She's done excellent. Again at Wembley, I thought she was brilliant. Young, but really, really wise head on her young shoulders. And the keep the Dean Caldwell coming into the mid midfield. You know, she has plenty of experience and. She'll strengthen up, hopefully, that midfield for the last 15 minutes. And the Dean Caldwell scored the uh, the goal that sealed their progress to the Euros. Northern Ireland, the two-legged playoff against Ukraine. It's a poor pass from Bright and McGill have a run on this. Straight into the action, McKenna. A good challenge. England throw. And you just saw the intent of Northern Ireland. They would love to give this crowd a goal. And I think there was five players in the attack. And unfortunately, Rebecca McKenna just couldn't get it out of her feet just to play that early ball. A few mistakes creeping in, but Kira Walsh makes up for that one. Toon. Here's Hemp. She's got Beth England through the middle. That's a lovely pass from Hemp, but England can't quite stretch enough. Yeah, I really enjoyed watching Hemp in the second half from the right-hand side, driving in off her left foot. She's able to then shoot all, as we've just seen before. Just do those little slide passes down the side of the defenders for on-running strikers, and Beth England come really close there from the, the Hemp through ball. McKenna. 
Just sold the pass a bit short. England back in possession. Yeah, and they can see Rebecca McKenna get on the front foot with fresh legs and, and run it daily there. Wait on the layoff for bronze. Hemp takes the tumble. No foul. Right, clearance nearly fell for Paris, out for a corner. Once again, defended well at the near post. Toon. Bright keeps it alive. Now England. And Bright's cross. Good win in the air from Hemp. And it's crept in. And Georgia Stanway has another. A brace for Stanway. And a fifth for England. Jackie Burns disappointed herself for that one. I think her defence can be equally so. Not cleared properly. Stanway in the right place to put another one away. Yeah, there's certainly some disappointed faces there. Just feeling inside the box, we, we have to get tighter and, you know, we have to rack first and Jackie maybe be disappointed she just didn't get, move her feet quick enough to get across, but I think you have to give credit to, to Stanway, she, she, she's just pounced on it and England have been very, very clinical in the second half. I thought the ball from Millie Bright was a bit deep, but Lauren Hemp does really well to, you know, get herself up and you know, and keep the ball in play and head it back into a danger area for, for Stanway to come onto. And as you mentioned, a fantastic finish from Stanway. Here's McGuinness. Callahan venturing forward. Georgia Stanway scored two at North Macedonia. She scored two again tonight. Here's McGill. McGee. Now McKenna. Not being given an inch. And England won it back. Great work from Rachel Daly. Two. And now Paris. Up against Vance. Tries to deliver it to Beth England. Yeah, I've been really impressed by Rachel Daly. It's frightening to think that she's not always an automatic starter. She's composed there, you know, she's, she's clinical when she passes the ball and she just gives England a real reassurance. header from McGuinness, Callahan. Colbert, good run. Noyes ratcheting up. McKenna. That's a good territory from Northern Ireland though. It has been good combination. Uh, McGee and McKenna both all teammates at Limfield and uh, they're showing good understanding with each other, but a fantastic run from Caldwell. And that's what she gives you, you know, her fresh legs there, being able to get the switch, and Northern Ireland are able to move up the pitch. A substitution for Northern Ireland before this is taken. And McGee's coming off. 
And Cara Hamilton coming on. The defender for a forward. As you said, Gail clearly wants this team to give the crowd something to shout about. I believe that's their first quarter of the game. Hopefully, this is it. It's been a long time since 1985. <laughs> <laughs> We finally get to see a Demi Vance delivery. We've given it the big build-up, let's hope she delivers. Defended by Bright, and now Northern Ireland light at the back. Harris brings it away. Soon can't quite return the pass. Really good defending from England. Millie Bright blocks it twice, but then we break on the counter, and I think our decision making on the counter attack, you know, wasn't great. I think the return pass from Toon into Nikita wasn't executed very well. I think we could have got out on the opposite side of Beth England. Fifteen thousand three hundred and forty eight mostly satisfied customers here at Windsor Park today. It's been a wonderful occasion and the crowd have seen some great goals. Well, hopefully there's one last one from the girls in green. A record attendance by some distance for a women's game here in Northern Ireland. Yeah, I think Tara Lynn said it. It's time, you know, that the girls get the recognition that they've been working so hard for. And I'm so proud of the Northern Ireland fans of coming out tonight and supporting our team. And we've seen attendance records being smashed recently all over the place for the women's game. It's a great to see, great to be a part of. I think with the game, uh, when it's marketed well, I think the crowds will come out. And, uh, you know, tonight's a, you know, even more proof of that. You know, 15 plus thousand coming out here tonight to, you know, support Northern Ireland. Five minutes remaining of normal time. Can't keep hold of it. A loose pass from Toon. Nicely played by McKenna. Sends it forward towards Callahan. And the flag is up. Great skill there by McKenna. Just show composure just to turn outside. And again, Farris alluded to it earlier. So really good, strong England back line. And they've held it well. And Georgia Stanway off, a couple of goals for her. Here's their second beautiful play by Ella Toon in the box. And uh, Jordan Nobbs on for Stanway. Here's Hemp. Good run. Didn't quite get hold of that shot. <laughs> On a hat trick, why not? Yeah, look, really good run. I've just said it before. I really enjoyed watching Hemp out on his right hand side, cutting in onto her left foot and getting strikes away. I think 
I'm excited to see Jordan Nobbs Nob back on the pitch for England. It's been a while for Jordan, you know, to get that English shirt back on. What she definitely will do will make them runs beyond that we've spoken about that the midfielders, you know, we were crying out for in the first half. I think she'll just join that now and, you know, continue to do what Georgia Stanway and other have been doing in the second half. Three minutes remaining. It's been another comfortable World Cup qualifying win for England. Lucy Bronze. And Williamson. Paris does well to keep that in. Up against McKenna. Turner inside out. Here's Toon. Satisfying night's work for Georgia Stanway. <laughs> Mistimed by Bright. Taking out Simone McGill. Yeah, I'm a funny feeling she made a banana. Emily Bright tackled the fort at Everton. A sore thigh in the morning. What do you think, Barra? Just a little bit. I think you know, it was a loose ball from Jordan Nobbs. Millie Bright, you know, she's committed to it. I think if she would have read it a little bit better, she'd have probably allowed Miguel to just take it and then defend it properly. But a free kick on the halfway line, you know, England will take that. Into the final minute of normal time. Advance. Send it to the edge of the box. McKenna. Rips it back in, claims for a handball, play on. McFadden does well to keep that. I thought his initial foul on McFadden on the edge of the box, pushing to the back. Here is where England can counter. Lost it in a dangerous area, England. And now Ella Toon. Mm. And went for the chip. The Burns wasn't having it. No, I'm a bit thankful that she went for that early one. She had time there to, to dribble it on in. And I don't think McFadden was expecting the ball back from McLaren in the middle of the park. And there's a lot of tired legs out there. Two minutes of time added on. And another learning experience for Kenny Shields and his team. Here's Hemp. We get around Vance. Another corner. corner a couple of ricochets oh and bright just off the top of the crossbar i gonna have seen her score goals like that before she's just leaning back isn't she Millie bright she hits it and it goes up onto the crossbar and over but yeah we've seen her score goals from there and we saw it in the Arnold Clark Cup against Canada Arnold Clark Arnold Clark is changed the Golden <laughs> Boot winner. Oh, I'm yes, happy you know. <laughs> this is true. The inaugural one. Great to see her alongside Alexia Puteas picking up that award. 
I mean, I remember I was there handing it out as Millie Bright, you know, Vitaeus was saying you can have it, and to the delight of Millie Bright, she took the trophy and walked away. <laughs> and why wouldn't you? England take another ginormous step towards qualification for the World Cup. Cruise control once again for Serena Beekman and her England team. Another game unbeaten under her charge. Two goals for Lauren Hemp, two for Georgia Stanway and one for Ella Toon. The youngsters coming to the fore ahead of this summer's European Championships. Northern Ireland held out well, but in the end, Clinical England just had too much for them. They'll meet again at the Euros on the south coast on July the 15th. Full time here at Windsor Park on a momentous occasion, a record crowd for a women's game. Northern Ireland nil, England five. Thank you very much, Robin. Yeah, much to be pleased about for Serena Wiegmann and England's performance. And again, a clean sheet for them. She's smiling, the England head coach. A disappointment for Kenny Shields women. They would be hoping to have made that a closer contest with, of course, in the back of their minds, the knowledge they are going to meet each other in just a few months' time in those Euros group stages. But I'm sure every game he is finding out more and more about his players. And let's not forget, they are the lowest ranked team to qualify for this summer's Euros so it's always uh, going to be a tough ask for them Alex isn't it to come up against opposition like England who are one of the favourites for the championship. Yeah and I think ultimately it came down to the second half I think Northern Ireland showed a lot of fatigue and that's when the game started opening up and England were clinical, uh, clinical. but like it, it's great preparation going into the Euros knowing what's going to be expected playing in front of a large crowd which obviously will be happening in the Euros but they need to take positives what they showed in the first half about the defending and that mentality so they've got stuff to build on. Yeah, obviously we'll be disappointed with the result. Um, obviously we wanted to give the fans something to cheer about and we wanted to get forward more in attack. But, you know, there's lots of work to be done. We've still got two, three months to go before the Euros kick off. And, you know, every game is a practice game. And if we learn from our mistakes, you know, there's no reason why we, we can't do better in the Euros. And you know what, you can only actually find out about yourself if you keep playing opposition that is challenging you. And, you know, a, a draw tonight against much lower ranked opposition perhaps wouldn't have taught Northern Ireland much more about themselves going into those championships. No, I think it's important. Like, obviously, we've just played Austria and played England back to back, and maybe fitness maybe did show at the end. And, you know, it's up to the girls now to go, go away and work hard on that. And, you know, we're going to be playing top, top teams in, in the Euro, so we've got to expect that we have to be at the 90 minute fitness barrier. So. Okay, let's have a little look then at the table. Uh, this is Group D uh, tonight and England maintaining their 100% winning record in the group. Still haven't conceded a goal, as I said, and the Lionesses now just need a point in their next qualifier in Austria in September to reach those finals for the fifth time in succession. Unfortunately, the playoffs are now out of reach for Northern Ireland uh, due to their inferior head-to-head -head against Austria, as we've said, so they are definitely out. So all their focus will be on those European championships. Um, it did become a bit of a rout in the end, and England started to make things look very easy, didn't they, when Ella Toon got on the scoreboard? And I like that side of England, being ruthless and being unapologetic about it. And it's the examples that we like. Lucy Bronze at her best when Lucy is getting on the ball, driving. Look when she has this space. She's so powerful when she's on the ball. But I like the amount of options that Lucy's got to, to choose from. Bodies wanting to get forward and in the box. And when Lucy gets into these sort of positions where she's different and world-class is picking out the right ball at the right moment. And Ella Toon actually as well, because we're saying about numbers getting into that box, but you don't want to arrive too early and be standing waiting. She arrives just at the right time, and it's a great overall play from England. But once again, it's Lucy Bronze at her best, which we've seen from her over the last couple of years, being so powerful and driving down that right channel. And, and she has been one of England's best players for many, many years. But what... Robin said actually there was something I was thinking towards the end and said to you what's interesting is how many of these young players 
have come through since 2019, since that impressive World Cup run. Yeah. And actually, you said the, the last year with a delay to this tournament because of COVID has, has brought those young players even further up their international progress. It's, it's all boding very, very well for England in terms it's, of the rise of the talent. Yeah, it's really exciting when you think about just this last camp, Ella Toon, Lauren Hemp, even Beth Mead in that. I think it's a really exciting time that what we're seeing from these younger players is the confidence in being brave on the ball. And I think within this England set, what Serena Wiegmann is doing them, allowing that when they're getting in 1v1 areas, have the confidence to take, take someone on, make something happen. And we're seeing that. And that's why England are creating so many chances. OK, well, let's hear now from Georgia Stanway. She is with Joe Curry. Well, Georgia, congratulations, a win. You're amongst the goals yourself tonight as well. How much did you enjoy that one? Uh, thank you. Yeah, really enjoyed it. I think the atmosphere was unbelievable. Credit to everyone that turned out today. And, yeah, we were happy to find a performance and play how we did and obviously get the result at the end. So credit where credit's due. They're a very, very tough side. Um, fans made it a hostile environment, but we thrived from it. We're so used to seeing England score goals for fun at the moment, but Northern Ireland made it really tricky in that first half. What was the message from Serena at half-time? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think the biggest thing was patience. Um, we obviously had all the possession, but it was just about creating them, them moments and obviously being clinical in them moments. And that's obviously what we did in the second half. And it's about just building from here. Um, we've got a big year ahead and we're just going to take it a step at a time. You talk about building from here. You're now just one point away from a spot at the World Cup. What's it like playing in this side at the moment? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. As you can see, everybody's in top form and everybody's um, at a high level. Um, it's a competitive environment. I think that's what's kind of keeping us going. Um, if we can create, like, I can't even hear because the fans are that loud. Um, if we can create an environment that's so, so competitive and that we drive each other, then nothing can stop us. Thanks for speaking to us, Georgia. Thank you very much. Well, get used to that, because I think those, those stadiums in the Euros are going to be pretty crazy for England, aren't they? A home championship for all this young talent to showcase what they've been building under Serena Wiegmann over the last seven months or so <laughs> is coming into great fruition. As we've said before, the youngsters are playing well. Georgia Stanway was on the cusp. She was on the edge of it, wasn't she, at the last major championship? Two goals today for her. And just even listening to her, she just makes you smile like you want to get behind her. But what we saw in the second half is her being more brave, being wanting to get on the ball. And actually, I think what it comes down to in the end as well is the right decision making at the right time. Once again, it's that rotation in wide areas. And Ella Toon, fantastic bit of skill, step overs. But look right here, decision making. Can I have a shot? No, my teammate's in a better position. I'm going to lay the ball off. And this is what England need to be going into the summer, is making those decisions and knowing it's a team game. It doesn't matter who scores, mm. who's on the score sheet. The way you're going to win the game is right decisions at the right time. And it was great for Georgia Stanway arriving in that moment and look at the smile on her face. Well, yeah, if you've got a 5 deal score line and Ellen White hasn't got a goal, then <laughs> it's good that these goals come from different areas of the pitch, isn't it? And, and different you, players. Yeah, you need that as well because when teams are doing their analysis, if they just know Ellen White scoring all the goals, and Mark, you need other players to be popping up in other areas. And I like this. I think this is where Northern Ireland started to show their fatigue and the spaces. But you need someone like Georgia Stanway staying sharp and still wanting to be in those areas and get on the end of things. Yeah, I suppose a little bit uh, disappointing that that fatigue did set in and actually the defensive mistakes crept in. Yeah, I think obviously the girls just started to not win their 1v1 battle, that you stay, stay close to the players, defend tight, and obviously I think just fatigue set in and the girls will be disappointed with the result, especially with the home fans being there. But. Yeah, but well, let's have a little look at, uh, was it still your favourite goal, Lauren Hemp's? Oh, I think, it's, I think it's the quality when you break it down. I think Leah Williamson getting on the ball and showing her pure class. The ability in games like this, sometimes you need a player, especially in the defensive areas, to get on the ball and drive, open up the pitch. But it's her ability to see that pass and execute it. And obviously, it still has something to do on the end of it. Her ability to stay calm and composed in those areas and finish off what was a great England move. Yeah, it really was, wasn't it? Captain Williamson, obviously, been named by Serena Wiegmann as the new captain now and uh, taking over from Steph Horton, who we hope will be back fit playing for England soon. But it is Williamson who will carry that mantle into the Summers Championship. So let's hear now from the England head coach. Serena Wiegmann is the Joe Curry. Well, Serena, congratulations. Job done. Wonderful results. But how pleased with the performance were you? Yeah, I think it was a very mature performance uh, in a great uh, atmosphere here with uh, so many people around, uh, also for Northern Ireland, a great occasion. 
but I think we played mature, we played well, we kept the ball going, we switched fields a lot. And the first half we wanted to be a little more clinical because we created lots of chances and we only scored. But we win 5-0 on the second half, we kept moving, they got a little tired. Um, um, so 5-0 score is just really good and again we conceded none. What did England do more of in the second half to bring those goals about? Well, I think that's a combination. Well, we finally scored, but we we tried to keep do. Actually, we we thought we played well the first half, and uh, they had to run so much that we could expect they would be a little more tired and there would come a little more space. So I think that was mainly the thing. What happened? We just kept on going. Um, well, and when at the end they substitute a lot and. And we did so that the, the speed of the game dropped a little bit, but well, when you're five nil up, it's okay. Well, well done for tonight. Thank you for speaking to us. Thanks. Thank you. Big smiles for Serena Vigma. Let's give you the details of Scotland versus Spain at Hamden in Group B. And uh, well, Scotland, uh, of course, beaten by them eight nil earlier in qualifying, fell behind 13 minutes into the game. Spain's record scorer Jennifer Hermoso netted her 44th international goal from the spot. And with 12 minutes remaining, uh, she made it 45 goals to make the scoreline 2-0, which uh, actually I think Scotland will say some kind of progress has been made there from their earlier encounter with Spain. And despite tonight's defeat, Scotland remain in the playoff spot with two games remaining. The good news, of course, is that their final two matches are against the bottom two in the group. And Spain's victory means they've qualified for the finals as group winners, incidentally. And they are one of the teams to beat, certainly, in the Euros. So very quickly, a word on that. This, the next time we shall meet will be those very exciting Euros. How confident are you feeling for England? You just said the word that sums it up. I think I'm so excited by this summer ahead and what we're going to see with women's football. I really am. And in spite of tonight's results, you're still full of it and excited and getting oh, yourself fit to be in that you know, sport. It's going to be our first Euros, so we're going to look forward to everything. You know, it's going to be experience and moments, you know, we're just going to share them all together and, you know, hopefully we'll get some results. Well, Ashley, thank you for joining us tonight. We want to see you in that squad in the summer, but you're welcome <laughs> back any time. Alex, as always, a joy. Thank you. Uh, so England are a step closer to World Cup qualification, but Northern Ireland's World Cup dream is over. They've got some homework to do, haven't they, before these two meet again in the group stages of the Euros. It all kicks off July 6th on BBC One and we simply cannot wait. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.